Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixelpad tutorial. We are creating our Clash Royale light game, right? And last class, what we did, we added everything you can see here on the screen. So we added the player base, the enemy base, the two bridges. I think the background we added last class as well. And our friend Ghost here, that mine I call the Gasper Ghost, right? And so, Right now, what is happening is when I press play, everything is created, including my ghost, right? And as I said last class, last video, the ghost is a unit. So that means that this ghost is going to be my player unit. That means that whenever I uh, summon this ghost on the, on the game, my ghost will walk towards the bridge and goes on the enemy castle's direction, right? So one thing is... I don't want my ghost to be created right on the start of my game. What I want to fix now is I want to create my ghost only when I click on my game. Okay, so if I don't want to create my ghost once I start my game, I don't need to have this code here, right? For the Gaspar ghost equals a new unit, and then the Gaspar ghost dot sprite equals a new sprite ghost, right? I don't need this on my game start. So I can delete that from here. And now you can see that when I stop and play my game, my ghost is not there anymore. So what I want to do is every time that I click on the screen, I want to spawn my ghost here in the middle. So to do that, we're going to go now to the loop tab. So the loop tab, as I said on the first class, any code that I put here will keep repeating again and again and again and again, right? Many times per second. So how is that useful? So if we are waiting for a click to spawn my unit, we have to keep checking if I have clicked or not, right? So that's why we're going to use the, the loop tab now, because the loop tab will keep checking for us if we have clicked or not. And if we have clicked, it's going to spawn my ghost unit, my Gasper ghost, right? In the game for us. So here on the loop tab in the game class, I can say here, if... So if is a condition, right? I'm expecting for something. So if what? So if the mouse was pressed, pressed. So if mouse was pressed, okay, but which button of the mouse, right? We have the right button, we have the left button. Okay, so the left button. So if mouse was pressed, brackets, quotes, left. So I'm looking for the left button of the mouse. Then, so I need this column here to say, then what? What happens if my mouse was pressed? So if the left button of my mouse was pressed, what I want to do is I want to create my Gasper ghost unit, right? Inside the game. And to create something inside the game, we know how to do that, right? I just have to give it a name and say that this is something. So my enemy base is a castle. So that made my castle... Uh, be spawned in the game for me and then I just moved it around right and then I gave it a sprite so that's the same thing we have to do we did in the last class so I'm just gonna repeat the same thing I'm gonna do Gasper ghost is a unit and that should already spawn my ghost here but as you can see here if I stop and play my game so the thing is the loop tab will keep checking for me if I have pressed the left button so I have not pressed yet, so it hasn't spawned my, my ghost unit here, right? But whenever I press in the game, so now, see that it created a unit for me there, but my unit that I called Gasper Ghost doesn't have a sprite yet, right? So we're gonna give a sprite to my unit. So I can say that my Gasper Ghost dot sprite is equals to so the sprite of my Gasper ghost is a new sprite because it doesn't have a sprite so i'm creating a new sprite and i have to say from which image right so i'm going to give the name of the image now using quotes and the name of the image is my ghost.png so ghost.png all right so now let me save my game whenever i stop and play my game if i click on the screen then my ghost is created. Uh, you might think that I keep clicking, but nothing's happening. But actually, it is. You are creating many ghosts in the same place, right? So you can just see one. All right. So what I want to do now is 
I don't want my goals to be created right in the middle of the screen. I want my goals to be created on my player base because my goals will leave from my base, will go to like through one of those two bridges, right? It will pick one of the bridges, go through that and then reach to the enemy castle. So the first thing is I want to make my ghost to be spawned in, on top of my player base. How can I do that? So I know that my Gasper ghost has its positions X and Y, right? So if I change the X position, for example, and say here minus 200 to bring it to the left, whenever I play my game, if I click on my game now, my Gasper ghost is spawned a little bit to the left, right? So let's make this position smaller. So minus 400, it's spawning almost on top of my castle. So minus 450, no, let's try minus 500. There, now it's spawning on the position of my castle, right? That would work, of course, but what if I decide to move my castle and I say here now that my player base won't be on minus 500 anymore. Now it will be on minus 300. So if I stop and play my game, my castle moved, right? But if I press uh, the left button, my goals is created now on the previous position of my castle. Because here I'm using the values. I'm not using the castle's position. So instead of using this number here, I want to say create my ghost on the position of the castle, of the player castle. It doesn't matter where the castle is, just put my ghost there, right? So if we move the castle around, it's not a problem for us. So I'm gonna bring my castle back to minus 500. There you go. And instead of using minus 500 here, I want to say get the position, the X position of the player base. So the Gaspar ghost.x will be the player base dot x. So see my my the x position of my Gaspar ghost will be the same as my player's base x position. But you can see that when I try to summon my unit, it gives me an error. It says name player base is not defined in game loop. So it's saying that it doesn't know what player base is, but it's weird, right? Because here on the start tab, we clearly specify that player base is a castle and it has a, its X position and it has a sprite, right? So here's the problem. We create our player base in the start tab, right? We say that player base is a castle. So anywhere here on my game start tab, if I try to say something about the player base, it will know who it is or what it is because I, it was created here, right? Here in the error, you can see that it says the player base is not defined in game loop. So it's saying that the game loop doesn't know what player base is, but the game start knows. So how can we make this player base accessible from anywhere? I want to access it from my loop tab, for example, but I cannot, right? Because it was created on my start tab. So all that I need to do is to say that my player base is from the game, it's inside my game. And once that I say that this is inside my game, anything else can access that, that, that object or that player base. So for example, if I say here before player base game dot, I'm just saying that my player base is inside my game. That's all that I'm saying. But then you will see that when I press play, now I got a new error that says the player base is not defined in game start on line five. So it's giving problems here now. It's saying that it doesn't know what player base is because now my player base is not called player base anymore. It's called game.playerbase. It's not the player base inside my game start tab. It's the player base inside my game, right? So here I just have to change to game.playerbase and here as well, line six, game.playerbase. So the player base inside my game, the player base inside my game, the player base inside my game, right? So if I press play, now you can see that we don't get any errors, but I still get an error when I uh, create my ghost, because as I said, it's not player base anymore. If we want to access that, we can, we have to say game.playerbase. So now my Gaspar ghost, the X position of my Gaspar ghost is gonna be the same 
position as the X position of my player base inside the game. So when we say game dot, we're just saying this can be accessed from anywhere. It's a global variable. That's how we call it. That's a global variable. So now if I stop and play my game, I click on the screen and my goal is created right on top of my castle. What if I move my castle? Let's see here. I move my castle to minus 200. Now my castle is here. If I click on the screen, my player is created there. But there's a problem because if I put my, let me just put my castle back here. But if I change my castle Y position, game dot player base dot Y equals 200. So I'm moving my castle's Y position 200. When I click here to summon my player, my, my ghost, it summons just on the X position of my castle, right? It's not getting the Y position of my castle. So here on the loop tab, I can also say that my Gasper ghost dot Y is going to be the same as my game dot player base dot Y. So I'm saying that the positions X and Y of my Gasper ghost is going to be the same as my player base X and Y positions. So now it doesn't really matter where I put my castle, my player will always be created there. So I can even move my castle to the other side of the screen. When I click on the middle, my player is created there, right? So this is way better for us. We don't have two values here. So if I change here the, the 500, I don't have to change here the 500 as well because this is already linked to whatever the player base uh, is, right? So here I, I don't want to change my Y position for my player base. So I'll just delete that line and I'll put my player base back to minus 500 to its original place. And now I can create my ghost on top of my player base. Cool, that's very good. Let me save my game. All right, so now the first thing I'm gonna do is I want my ghost to walk to the right. That's all it's gonna do right now. It's just gonna walk to the right on the direction of the enemy base and that's all. I'm not gonna make it walk through the bridge yet, but I'm gonna wait, make it walk to the right. How can I do that? So in the first class, I said that the classes are behaviors, right? How each thing on our game will behave. And to walk to the right, that's a behavior of my unit. Every unit that I create in my game, if I create a ghost, if I create a spider, if I create, I don't know, a slime, anything, if it is a unit, it should walk to the right. That's what I want to say, right? So how can I do that? So I have here my unit class. If I click on this unit class, you can see that it also has a start and a loop tab and they function exactly the same as my game start and loop tab. There's just one difference that is the game start happens whenever I press play because my game starts, right? But my unit start will only happen whenever I create a unit. So here, whenever I say Gasper Ghost is a unit, this is created in my game, right? And then it runs the start tab for the Gasper Ghost. Make sense? Okay, so I want all my ghosts, all my units, it doesn't matter if it's a ghost or a spider or anything else, all my units to walk to the right side. How can I do that? So let's go here on the unit and I'm gonna go to the loop tab. Why loop tab? Because I cannot just say move right here on the start tab and expect my, my unit to move to the right. This is a, a repetition that you have to keep saying like, uh, give an extra step to the right, give an extra step to the right. And again and again and again, if you do it many, 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 many times, your, your unit, your character, your class will be walk, will be moving uh, to the right side, right? So here on the loop tab, what we want to do is we want to always keep telling the unit to move one unit, one pixel to the right. How can I do that? So as I'm inside, the unit class and I'm coding inside the unit class, if I want to refer to any unit's property, I have to use self. So if I'm saying about the unit's X position, I can say self.x. So I'm saying my own X position, right? Because this code is inside the unit. You can see here unit start and unit loop, right? So I'm saying that my own X, so all the units, 
will will think like that. My own x will now be different, will be something else. So what I want to do is I want to keep increasing the x position to make my unit move to the right. So if I want to keep increasing that, I can say that my self.x, my own x, in this case, this unit's x is going to be self.x plus 1. So if the x position was 0 before, now it will be 0 plus 1. That is 1, right? And this is the loop tab. So this keep repeating again and again and again. So it is 1 now, and then now it will be 2. And then on the other loop, it is 2 now, and then now it will be 3, right? So all my units will think like that. All my units will behave like that. It doesn't matter, right? So here, if I stop and play my game now, whenever I create my ghost, you can see that it starts moving to the right. I didn't say anything here on my game loop for my Gaspar ghost, right? Because my Gaspar ghost is a unit, so it knows what to do. On the loop tab of my unit, it says that all units will keep increasing their X positions, right? And that makes my unit to walk to the right side. So you can see here, that that's what happens when I create my 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 Gaspar ghost. It starts walking to the right side. Uh, even though it's looking to the left, it's moving to the right. I'm not saying I'm not telling my ghost to look to the right. I'm telling my ghost to move to the right, and that's what it's doing, right? And it's for now ignoring the enemy's castle, but we're gonna solve that soon. All right. So now we've learned that each class can have their own codes, right? and define their own behaviors. So we're gonna use that on the next class to clean a little bit these, these uh, game class because we have a lot of information here that we can have spread it out on the classes. And this makes our, game, our code way more readable, right? So make sure you save your game. And this class is done for now, but I'll see you in the next video. Bye.